Hi, this is the Science Chef. Today we'll be solving some problems on projectile motion using the knowledge we have acquired in the first three parts of this series on projectile motion, where we learned about the definition, types, and examples of projectile motion and how to derive the equations and formulas of projectile motion. So, let's start. Question 1. An anti-aircraft shell is fired vertically upward with a muzzle velocity of 1000 meters per second. Calculate 1. The maximum height it can attain. 2. The time taken to reach the maximum height. 3. The instantaneous velocities at the ends of the 20 seconds and 50 seconds. 4. When will its height be 37.5 kilometers? Neglecting air resistance and taking acceleration due to gravity as 10 meters per second squared. This question is of vertical projection since the projector was fired vertically upwards without any angle of projection to the horizontal. And from the information provided, we are only given the initial velocity u, 1000 meters per second, and asked to find the maximum height, capital H, the time, the time taken to reach the maximum height small letter t, the instantaneous velocities at 20 seconds and 30 seconds, that's u20 and u30 respectively. And it will take to reach a height of 37.5 kilometers. Firstly, we'll sketch the diagram of the motion. So if this is the ground level, The shell is fired upwards. Initial velocity u naught be 1000 meters per second. We'll be looking for the instantaneous velocity at u20 and also at u30. So that's the sketch of the diagram of the motion. To find the maximum height h, we'll use the equation that connects v, u, a, and s. That is v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. For an upward vertical motion, a equals to minus g, s equals to h, and the final velocity v equals to 0 at the maximum height, as you can see here. So you can call this vy squared equals to uy squared plus 2as, since it's a vertical projection. So here vy equals to what? 0. We substitute this into the equation above. We'll have 0 equals to u squared minus 2gh. And our u is 1000 meters per second. If we evaluate this, we'll obtain 2gh equals to u squared and h equals to u squared over 2g. Our u is 1000 meters per second. So this implies that h will be equal to 1000 squared over 2 times 10. So this gives us 1 million over 20. If we solve for each, we'll obtain 50,000 meters as the maximum height that the antique aircraft can attain. To find the time taken to reach the maximum height, that's small t. We'll make use of the first equation of motion which connects v, u, g and t for the upward motion and that is v equals to u minus g t. Remember at the maximum height 
v equals zero as we have seen already so you can say this is what vy equals to uy minus gt so substituting the values we'll have zero equals to uy minus gt and if we evaluate this this will be gt equals to u y what's that u y u y initial velocity here is 1000 meters per second squared and our g is 10 so you solve for t t will be what u y over g you substitute the values into the above equation and solve for t will obtain 100 seconds so as the time the anti-aircraft shell will take to reach the maximum height to find instantaneous velocities that's u20 and u30 at 20 seconds and 30 seconds we will still make use of the equation connecting v u g and t and then find the values of v when t equals 20 and 30 seconds that's in other words we make use of this equation v equals to u minus g t v y equals to u y minus g t so here our v y will be equal to what u 20 which will be equal to what 1000 minus 10 into 20 seconds and this will give us 1000 minus 200 which is 800 meters per second similarly when our vy is u30 at 30 seconds this will be 1000 minus 10 into 30 seconds that gives us 1000 minus 300 which gives us 700 meters per second for my answers the instantaneous velocities at 20 seconds and 30 seconds are 800 meters per second and 700 meters per second respectively to find the time when the height is 37.5 kilometers that is what i call t 37.5 we we'll first convert the given height to SI unit, which is 37,000 500 meters because 1,000 meters is equivalent to 1 kilometer. 37.5 kilometers will be equal to 37,500 meters. So I'm going to use the equation that connects H, U, G, and T for the upward motion, which is H equals to U, T minus half G, T squared. We then substitute the values and solve for T, which is 37,500 equals to 1,000 T minus half into 10 t squared this becomes 37500 equals to 1000 t minus 5 t squared this leads to a quadratic equation if we divide through by 5 this gives us 7500 equals to 200 t minus t squared so rearranging this will obtain t squared minus 200 t plus 7500 equals to zero i resolve for this we have t just t minus 150 into t minus 50 equals to what zero if we solve for t we'll obtain if we solve for t we'll obtain t equals to 150 seconds or 50 seconds now we have two values for t but only one can be correct in this case only one can be correct so let's analyze our answers since the anti-aircraft shell took 100 seconds to reach its maximum height 
at 50,000 meters. Then it will use a lesser time to reach a lower height of 37,500 meters. Therefore, the correct time is 50 seconds. Because this is more than the time it took to reach the maximum height. So the answer is 50 seconds. Alternatively, we can use the two equations v squared, vy squared is equal to uy squared minus 2gh and vy equals to uy minus gt. Using the first equation, we can substitute the values of g, h and u to get the value of vy at 37,500. You can first of all use the value of h as 37,500 in this first equation to find the value of v at that height and then substitute the value of v at that height into the second equation to find the value of t as shown. So what vy squared would be equal to what 1000 1, squared minus 2 into 10 into 37,500 and this will give us 1 million minus 750,000 so this gives us 250,000 so we now find V V will be the square root V Y now will be the square root of 250,000 meters squared per second squared and this gives us 500 meters per second this makes sense because at 37,500 meters it's getting closer to its maximum height of 50,000 meters so its velocity at that height will be lower than its initial velocity which was 1000 meters per second so we're now going to substitute this value into this equation that will be 500 equals to 1000 minus 10 t and if we rearrange this this will be 10 t equal to 1000 minus 500 which gives us 500 so solving for t T will be equal to 500 over 10, which equals to 50 seconds. Question 2. A stone is projected upwards at an angle 30 degrees to the horizontal from the top of a tower 100 meters and hits the ground at a point Q. If the initial velocity of projection is 100 meters per second, Calculate the 1. Maximum height of the stone above the ground 2. Time it takes to reach this height 3. Time of flight 4. Horizontal distance from the foot of the tower to the point Q Neglect air resistance and take the acceleration due to gravity as 10 meters per second squared This question is on angular projection Since you are given the angle of projection with initial velocity From the information provided we are given the angle of projection theta as 30 degrees. The height of the tower, h small t, o w, as 100 meters. Initial velocity as 100 meters per second. And now to calculate the maximum height, capital H, the time it will take to reach that height, small t. The time of flight, capital T, and the range, capital R, which is the horizontal distance from the foot of the tower to the point Q, and a G remains 10 meters per second squared. First, we are going to draw the diagram. We are going to sketch the diagram for this motion. Let this be our tower. with height hundred meters
let the top of the tower be the level of projection so we project the ball project the stone from the top of the tower at 30 degrees celsius and this is the maximum height this is the maximum height so when it gets to the maximum height it falls back it will fall down to the ground so from here we are going to calculate this small height first and then add it to this to the height of the tower to get the maximum height from the diagram the maximum height of the stone above the ground is equal to small h plus 100 meters where 100 meters is the height of the tower these are h tower but to find small h to find the small h we use the formula h equals to u squared sine squared theta all over 2g so seeing the values of u theta and g into the formula we'll have small h equals to 100 squared sine squared 30 degrees all over 2 into 10 it gives us 10,000 times 0 0.5 squared sine 30 is 0 0.5 and sine squared 30 degrees is the same thing as saying sine 30 degrees times sine 30 degrees all over 20 so this gives us 500 times 0 0.25 and we evaluate this we obtain 125 meters if we add this value to the height of the tower the height of a tower will be equal to 100 plus 125 meters which equals 225 meters to calculate the time it will take to reach the maximum height let's label this diagram let's call this point p let's call this point r and let's call this point q yes to calculate the time small t it will take the stone to move from point p to r we we'll use the formula u sine theta all over g we we'll substitute the values our u will be 100 sine 30 degrees all over 10 so this will give us 10 times 0 0.5 which gives us 5 seconds so it means that to take the stone 5 seconds to move from point p to point r alternatively we can use the formula t equals to square root of 2 small h over g so this gives us square root of 2 times 125 all over 10 that equals square root of 250 over 10 if we evaluate this we obtain square root of 25 which is 5 seconds you can use whichever method that is convenient for you or that you feel comfortable with to calculate the time of flight capital t we will first calculate the time it will take the stone to fall from the maximum height r to the ground that's from point r to q and then add it to the time it will take the stone to reach the maximum height which we've already calculated so to calculate the time it will take the stone to fall from the maximum height to the ground we use the formula we use the formula h equals to 
u t sine theta plus half g t squared where h is the total height from the ground level which is 225 meters u is zero at the maximum height at this maximum height here at this point ui is zero for the downward motion just the same way the final velocity vy is zero for the upward motion remember our velocity here is 100 meters per second so we substitute these values into the equation we substitute zero but u equals to zero at maximum height that means that h will be equal to what half g t squared if we solve if we make t subject of formula here we'll have t equals to 2 t squared equals to 2 h all over what g and we take the square root of both sides we'll have t equals to square root of 2 h all over g so if we substitute the values of h and g into the equation we'll have a t to be equal to square root of 2 times 225 all over 10 that's where we got at 225 the maximum height we calculated so this gives us square root of 450 all over 10 so t equals square root of 45 root 45 which gives us 6.7 seconds so now let's call this t2 and call this t1 so to get a time of flight we are going to add t1 plus t2 and at t1 t1 is 5 seconds well at t2 is 6.7 seconds so that gives us 11.7 seconds at the time it will take the time to take the stone to move from point B to point Q. To calculate the range R, we will use the formula R equals to U squared sine 2 theta all over G, which is the product of the horizontal velocity U cos theta and the time of flight 2u sine theta over g to so evaluate this you will get u squared sine 2 theta over g if you substitute the values of u theta and g into this equation we'll have 100 squared sine 2 into 30 degrees all over 10 so this will give us 10,000 times sine 60 degrees all over 10. Evaluating this gives us 1,000 times 0 0.8660. And this will give us the range as 866 meters, which means that the distance of the stone from the foot of this tower to point Q. Yes, this distance here, this is the range, will be equal to 866 meters. Question 3. The range of a target is found to be 20 kilometers. A shell leaves a gun with a velocity of 500 meters per second. What must be the angle of elevation of the gun if the ground is level? This question is based on angular projection. 
since we are given the range and initial velocity and asked to find the angle of projection. So the first thing we will do is to write out the given parameters while making sure that all values are in the appropriate SI unit. So we are given the range R as 20 kilometers. Remember, 1000 meters equals 1 kilometer. So 20 kilometers will be equal to 20 times 1000 meters, which is 20,000 meters. Okay. Also, we are given the initial velocity u as 500 meters per second. We are asked to find theta, the angle of elevation of the gun or the angle of projection. So we're going to use the formula that connects r, u, g, and theta. Bearing in mind that r g is what? 10 meters per second squared. So we use the formula for range. r equals to u squared sine 2 theta all over g. If we make sine 2 theta subject of formula, this will become gr all over u squared. If we substitute the values of gr and u into this equation, we'll obtain 10 into 20,000 all over 500 squared. If we evaluate this, we'll obtain 200,000 all over 250,000, which gives us 0 0.8. So from here, we take the sine inverse of both sides. So as 2 theta will be equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.8, and that is equivalent to 53.14 degrees. So to get theta, we we'll divide both sides by 2. And this will give us 53.14 divided by 2. 0.14 degrees divided by 2, which is 26.57 degrees. Question 4. Write down the relationships for finding the range and time of flight for a projectile fired with an initial velocity of u and at an angle of elevation theta. A body projected upward at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal has an initial speed of 90 meters per second. 1. In how many seconds will it reach the ground? 2. How far from the point of projection will it strike the ground? 3. At what angle with the horizontal will it strike? Take g as 10 meters per second squared. The relationships for finding the range and time of flight for a projectile fire with an initial velocity of u and at an angle of elevation theta are range r equals to u squared sine 2 theta all over g and time of flight T equals to 2u sine theta all over g, where u is the initial velocity and theta is the angle of elevation. angle of projection. In this question, we are given theta as 30 degrees initial speed or initial velocity as 90 meters per second and we are asked to find the time of flight, capital T, the range, capital R and the angle theta. 
to the horizontal with which it will strike the ground. So to find the time of flight, which is the number of seconds with which it will reach the ground, we'll make use of the formula for time of flight. T equals to 2u sine theta all over g. Let's call this theta 2 and this one theta 1. 2u sine theta 1 all over g. So, substituting the given values of the parameters of u, theta, and g, we'll have 2 times 90 times sine 30 degrees all over 10. If we evaluate this, this will be 18 times 0 0.5, which gives us 9 seconds as the time of flight it means that the body will take nine seconds to reach the ground from its point of projection similarly the range can be calculated using the formula r equals to u squared sine 2 theta all over g so you substitute this will be 90 squared times sine 2 into 30 degrees all over 10. So for the evaluation gives us 8100 times sine 60 degrees all over 10. It gives us 810 times 0 0.8660 and this gives us 701.46 meters as the range to find the angle with the horizontal with which the body will strike the ground that's theta 2 at theta 2 will be the same as 30 degrees since the final velocity with which the body strikes the ground is the same as that with which it was projected it implies that the angle of inclination to the horizontal with which it will strike the ground will be the same as that with which it was projected into the air so that's why it is 30 degrees if you like to learn everything about projectile motion check the link in the description also if you're able to learn anything from this video kindly drop a comment give us a like share this video and subscribe to our channel this always encourages us to do more videos like this remember not everything that matters counts and not everything that counts matters keep staying focused till i see you when i'll see you